And lastly, you know, can political correctness be a brand? Is it a product? Is it something that's bought and sold? How is it commodified? I mean, that's really one of the main things that they're suggesting here is that political correctness can be a commodity. Not that it's stupid, not that it's baseless, not that it's meaningless, not that you know, there's not good intentions be behind a lot of the people who are um, proponents of it and advocates of it, um, but that they're often commodified. And we see that in this whole arc. And what it's really kind of you know, at the essence here is like how political correctness can be commodified. Um, and branded and used. I mean, I, there's a great scene um, in one of the earlier episodes uh, where the Whole Foods representative comes in and, you know, is he's like, is, you know, is Token and, and you know, Jimmy uh, and Timmy always sit in the front and next to, next to, one, next to one another? You know, um, that sort of like behavior, right? Um, you know, how is that reflective of like PC as a sort of brand, as a product that's bought and sold uh, by, by universities, by, by corporations? You know, again, with like not necessarily being true intent behind it, where they're selling, they're selling PC in order to sell you products, but they don't really believe in, ally for, advocate for true equity but they use political correctness as a branding and, and marketing tool, you know? And I think that's really important. They, they, they really ask in this episode, or excuse me, the seasonal arc, you know, beyond, you know, critiquing PC culture, they don't really say it's baseless, but they, they ask, can it be used, and it can, can it be used, um, you know, susceptible to corporate manipulation? Can corporations manipulate it to be able to sell us stuff. And that's that whole weaving of gentrification, advertising, and PC. Is it can't, are companies manipulating the underlying tenets or the, you know, the characteristics of PC, right? Which ultimately want us to be an equitable society to sell us chips and underwear and sneakers and cars. And that's, that's a question that, that, that they ask. So one of the things that they ask, you know, really, and what they're driving us towards is to question how PC is used specifically by, by the media and by corporations, you know. Um, and it's something that they're really strongly suggesting is that it's, it's, it's used um, as a marketing tool to sell us stuff. Lastly, and this is, a, again, a question I want to ask. Is PC censorship? I mean, they're obviously suggesting it is, right? It's a form of censorship, right? And there's so many forms of censorship, um, you know, uh, economic censorship where you won't give someone money or funding or you won't buy advertising time um, on their station, you know, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, South Park, you know, uh, there's threats of violence. I mean, there's so many different ways that lead to, to censorship uh, of content. But is PC censorship? Does PC lead to, to censorship? And is that important thing to think about? Does it matter? Should, should we, in order to be an equitable society, right, uh, should we censor? Or does that create more inequity? Right, and this question is kind of like you know where you know is using language that doesn't offend even with social pressure the same as someone telling you what you can and cannot say? That's something to really think about. You know, just being afraid to offend people is that the equivalent of being forced to say something? which is censorship, right? Or not say something, which is censorship. So can social pressure be the same thing as the FCC, as your boss, as, um, as, a, as, as a cable network, as an advertising company, whatever, whatever it is, you know, that say, no, you can't do that. Is, is it the same for you to give in to social pressures? Is that the same thing to change your language or not say a particular thing because you're afraid, right? 
And this is a quote I pulled from one of the readings. Which is better to live in a world where all individuals have the right to name themselves or to live in a world where most our basic prejudices, prejudices are on display for all to see, right? And, and, and so again, it kind of goes through like this whole thing in this, in, the, in this article, like society's better when people can live their lives who they are and who they, and who they want to be. I don't think South Park necessarily disagrees with that. I think there's a lot of episodes where they, they advocate for, for self-expression and freedom of expression and being oneself um, as long as it's, there's no harm to society. That's sort of the element of liberty in libertarian philosophy. But they do draw us to ask questions, you know, is language a path to equity? Is that the path to equity? Or is it part of the path um, to equity, or is it not, you know, um, and do you think, like, if we change our language, does it change prejudice, or does it reinforce it, does it actually make a difference, or does it just actually tend to, to reinforce prejudices that people have, it's, it could have a dual effect, I mean, again, it depends on, you know, who is, uh, the recipient of asking their language to be changed or feeling like they're, they're having, you know, uh, they're being asked or forced uh, to change their, their language. Um, and can respectful words lead to actual respect? And it goes back to this thing in, in South Park is, you know, the equivalence of uh, acceptance to tolerance, I, I think is, is, is pretty interesting. Like, just because you're PC and you use equitable language and respectful words, are you truly an ally? Are you truly an ally to, 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 to marginalized groups specifically, right? Do you really, like, is there true, true meaning behind the words you, that you use or you choose to not use, you know? and um, that's just a really interesting thing to just think about, the implications of our language, specifically when we're talking about, you know, identity politics and we're talking about, um, you know, other people and how they want to be referred to and how they want to live and who they want to be and who they are, you know, um, what is the role of language in that? And I think South Park, you know, brings up a lot of ways to think about that. And you may fucking totally disagree with him and think, like, this whole season was bullshit, <laughs> or whatever, but, you know, it's so weird, you know, at the first day of class, I said, I think, who I'm like in South Park, so I just whacked the mic, who, I think, who I'm like in South Park, I said, Randy Marsh, Eric Cartman, and PC Principal, um, you know, you think about, like, let's take the bigot, and combine them with the idiot, and combine them with the PC bro, um, you know, but I, I, I I, I just think, you know, with, with that in, in my mind, you know, just thinking about all of these things. And I think, like, South Park offers an interesting antithesis to how we think about, talk about, you know, equity and the true merit be behind what we say and, and why we say it. Are we really, do we really mean what we say and what we advocate for and how do we show that, you know? Um, and I think they, they, they at least make you think about and question some of those, your own intents and, and ideas. But I feel like I am like rambling on, <laughs> on right now. We're gonna leave it with that. Uh, next class, we're gonna talk with sen about censorship. So that is gonna be the deal, and the exam is coming up already. We got exam two coming up real soon here. But we're gonna talk about censorship next class. We've already gotten a little bit, a little bit of that. And um, I think it'll be interesting to talk a little bit about that and maybe reflect upon the content from this week. I'm having some crazy allergies. I'm sorry, I'm just like sniffling, um, you know, but whatever, fuck it. The pollen is just beating me up down here. I hope you're well. Hope you're taking care of yourselves and uh, hope you're maybe enjoying some sunshine or some, some nice weather, um, you know. Uh, happy birthday to me. I'm 40. Anyways, uh, love y'all. Take care. I'll check you on the flip. The Real Dr. Dre. I'm out. Peace.